I invite you all to join in the singing of our national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang. We are here convened to witness the inauguration of Dr. Dennis Berkey as the 15th president of Worcester Polytechnic Institute. The Reverend Peter Scanlon, Kathleen Chaplin of WPI will give the invocation. Let us pray. O oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, we ask your blessings upon us this afternoon as we begin this inauguration ceremony. Send your Holy Spirit upon President Dennis Berkey to bless him with the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of David, and the faithfulness of Moses, so he will lead us to be a family of love and support for one another as we strive to represent the ideals of this university. Bless Kathy, his wife that she will continue to be that person of love and support that they promised each other so many years ago. May she and Dennis together continue to teach all of us by their lifestyle and example the full meaning of a loving and supportive marriage. Bless his children that they will be persons of love and support to their dad as he takes on this leadership role of WPI. Bless all of us, trustees, administrators, faculty, staff, and students, Dennis's new extended family, that we will strive to work with him to make this university a place where men and women will be formed to be concerned about their fellow human beings. Bless his friends and guests who gather with us today that they will be true friends who will unite with him and will support him as he takes on this mantle of leadership. We ask these blessings in the name of that God that we all love and serve in so many different ways. Amen. Please be seated. May I present to you 
William Marshall, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of WPI. <clears throat> well, good afternoon. And a good afternoon it is indeed. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, and the faculty, and the students, and the staff of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, I'd certainly like to welcome you to our campus and thank you for joining us to witness the formal installation of Dr. Dennis D. Berkey as WPI's 15th president. Please also join me in extending a very special welcome to uh, honored guests who are here with me on the stage. Uh, first, our senior senator from Massachusetts, Senator Edward M. Kennedy. Uh, go right ahead. <laughs> Congressman from Massachusetts, Jim McGovern. <laughs> the Honorable Timothy Murray, Mayor of the City of Worcester. <laughs> You've just heard from the Reverend Peter Scanlon, the Catholic Chaplain at WPI. Reverend. Dr. Edmund C. Cranch, past president of WPI, and the heads of WPI's 15 departments. Also on stage are representatives of three components of the greater WPI community. Uh, Adam Wilbur, Adam is president of the Student Government Association, which represents 2,800 uh, undergraduates. Nicholas Sherwood represents the Graduate Student Organization, representing about 1,000 full and part-time. And Fred Costello, class of 1959, and the president of the WPI Alumni Association, which represents over 25,000 alumni worldwide. So. <clears throat> I would also like to welcome uh, to the delegates from more than 50 colleges, universities, and learned societies from all over the world who are in the audience today. Also the members of the WPI Board of Trustees and many other honored guests. And finally, I would also like to extend a very warm welcome on behalf of the entire community to Catherine Berkey, wife of our president. Much as the Earl Bridge links the historic side, eastern side, of the WPI campus to the newer western side, the inauguration of a university president connects a modern academic institution to ancient customs and tradition that trace their origins to the earliest days of higher education. Today's ceremony is also a link to 140 years of WPI history and a reminder that the accomplishments that we will realize through the leadership of Dr. Berkey will rest atop a foundation of excellence built by the 14 presidents that have preceded him. The inauguration of Dr. Berkey is indeed a joyous rite of passage and a defining moment in the light life of this university. It's a time for our community to come together, to honor the past, to celebrate the present, and to look forward boldly to a new era, a new vision for the future, and a renewed commitment to improving, expanding, and continually evolving this remarkable institution. As we prepare to follow Dr. Berkey across the bridge to our future, let us remain ever mindful of the qualities and the values and the traditions that have made this such a distinctive and distinguished university. By remaining true to the spirit of innovation in a relentless pursuit of excellence that have characterized WPI through the decades, I truly believe that we will, with Dr. Berkey's wisdom and firm guiding hand, go on to accomplish extraordinary things 
and to win the worldwide recognition that this university so richly deserves. This is indeed a historic day. We are honored to have you here to share it with us. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce someone you already know very well, someone who has been a true friend to this university and to education in general, Senator Edward M. Kennedy. <clears throat> Senator Kennedy has, as you all know, represented Massachusetts in the United States Senate since he was first elected in 1962. Since then, he has been re-elected seven times, and he is now the second most senior member in the Senate. Throughout his career, Senator Kennedy has fought for issues that benefit people, especially the people of Massachusetts. His advocacy has touched almost every aspect of our lives, but especially with education. He has worked hard on improving elementary and secondary uh, education and making college more affordable. The senator is a strong advocate for increased financial aid, for loans and grants for students, as well as a champion of university-based research. We very much appreciate, I can tell you, how helpful that he has been to WPI. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present to you Senator Ted Kennedy. Thank you very much, uh, William Marshall, your chairman of the WPI Board of Trustees, for your kind words of uh, introduction. The members of the Board of Trustees, uh, his honor the uh, mayor, a wonderful uh, friend and someone I have a great regard and respect for, uh, Jim McGovern, who is one of our outstanding representatives in the Congress. It's a pleasure to be with you today. The members of the faculty, uh, the parents, and the friends of WPI. I thank you, uh, Bill, for your generous introduction. I'm honored to be here today with all of you at WPI in congratulating Dennis Berkey as the new president of this extraordinary institution. Dennis is my kind of president. <laughs> His impressive 30-year career as a professor and administrator promoting excellence makes him an ideal choice to lead WPI with its strong tradition as a university that continues to raise the bar on excellence year after year. It's said that universities are such great storehouses of knowledge because every entering student brings a little knowledge in and no graduate takes any knowledge out. But that's not true at WPI. For nearly a century and a half, WPI has won well-deserved renown for its leadership in providing world-class technological education and has consistently been recognized as one of the finest research universities in the nation. Your emphasis on close student-faculty relations and project-based learning means that WPI graduates know how to work in teams linking disciplines, and committed to the indispensable role of the sciences and mathematics in improving our society and meeting so many of the nation's most serious challenges. Since our beginnings as a commonwealth, Massachusetts has been the education state, and we are proud of that commitment. Our state constitution proclaims that the education of our citizens is necessary for the preservation of their rights and liberties. When John Adams enshrined those wise words in our state's founding document, he understood what we know is still true today, that education is the key that opens the golden door of opportunity and lays the groundwork for our future success as individuals, 
as a commonwealth and as a nation. Good education encourages good citizenship. Generation after generation, it revitalizes our economy, strengthens our national security, and enables our people to fulfill their dreams. WPI delivers on that commitment to excellence. At this university, no curricula are alike. A seven-week term could mean three academic courses or a targeted public interest project. And that project could involve encouraging interest in an engineering education in a Worcester high school or guaranteeing access to clean water in Thailand. It's exactly what John Adams had in mind. Projects that provide academic skills while improving lives. Encouraging such international projects is especially timely today because they respond so directly to the immense new challenges of globalization facing our country. Never before have we felt so clearly the intensity of competition from other nations. Here in Massachusetts, often with great pain, we've learned to deal with competitive pressures from other regions of the nation, and we grew complacent over the decades. But suddenly today, we see our jobs moving, not south or west, but to distant corners of the globe where skills are plentiful and costs are low. We can meet that challenge, but we cannot do it by reducing wages and outsourcing jobs. We have to raise our skills. We compete best by removing limits to our vision, encouraging new creativity, promoting innovation, and providing new opportunities and hope to every man, woman, and child in Massachusetts and America. The future is ours to build, and WPI is building it. You're looking beyond the narrow horizon of today to the needs of tomorrow. In so many ways, the university does it well. I commend your strong commitment to high school education with the Massachusetts Academy of Math and Science. Talented 11th grade students have a vig rigorous 1,200 hours of intense math and science instruction, thanks to you. And 12th grade students take the same courses as WPI freshmen. These young men and women are receiving a priceless jump start towards their college career and a strong foundation for our next generation of scientists and engineers. Your 30,000 alumni and 3,000 current students can attest to the difference that project-based learning has made in their own education and in their own careers. You learn to apply your knowledge early and often, and it gives you a sense of pride and accomplishment, a confidence that you can do anything with the right team. WPI graduates have resumes that send a clear message. I can get the job done. That's why you find them in such significant positions in federal, state, and local government, and in many of the best known international corporations. Your special attractiveness to corporate America has helped to rebuild our regional economy and is one of the greatest assets of the new Worcester science economy. Cutting edge companies are attracted to excellence like a magnet, and they can find it here in abundance from top researchers to top students. WPI is a modern university built on New England traditions, and your graduates are helping all of us build a brighter future. Dennis Berkey has the ideal blend of academic and administrative skills needed to lead WPI wisely to that future and to keep this great university on the path of continuous growth. He has the vision to build on the university's proud accomplishments identify global issues, and develop the most innovative ways to respond. His leadership will be indispensable here on the WPI campus and to the higher education community nationwide. I commend President Berkey and all the others on his impressive team, the administrators, the faculty, the staff, and the students. We're all very, very, very proud of each of you at WPI. You're the ones who make this university 
world class. I thank you for inviting me to be here with you today, and I look forward to working with you closely in the years ahead to be sure that Congress does its part as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Kennedy, for that very appropriate statement. Dennis D. Berkey joined the WPI community nearly 11 months ago now, continuing a distinguished career as a visionary leader and an innovator in higher education. Before being named WPI's 15th president, Dr. Berkey spent 30 years at Boston University, starting as an assistant professor of mathematics going on to chair the Department of Mathematics at BU before joining the Central Administration in 1983. He spent five years as the Dean of Arts and Sciences where he worked to promote excellence in teaching, he recruited outstanding faculty, and he reformed the liberal arts curriculum. He served twice as University Provost at BU from 1987 to 1991 and from 1996 to 2004. In that position, he oversaw 14 schools and colleges, the university library system, the division of extended education, division of international programs, and a variety of research centers and institutes. He oversaw the Office of Sponsored Research and a research portfolio that exceeded $300 million in 2004. Dr. Berkey has also distinguished himself as a scholar in the field of mathematics publishing extensively in applied mathematics, the theory of differential equations, and optimal control. In addition, he is the author of two textbooks on calculus, both of which are widely used and now in their third edition. A graduate of Muskingum College in New Concord, Ohio, where he received a BA in mathematics, he holds an MA in mathematics from Miami University and a PhD in mathematics from the University of Cincinnati. He's a member of the American Mathematics Society, the Mathematical Association of America, and the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. Among his many awards and honors, he has served as a trustee of the Dibner Institute for the History of Science and Technology, Muskingum College, and the Huntington Theatre Company in Boston. In 1978, Boston University presented him with the prestigious Metcalf Cup and prize for excellence in teaching. Mr. Marshall, it is my pleasure to present to you Dr. Dennis D. Berkey for investiture as the 15th president of Worcester Polytechnic Institute. <clears throat> president Berkey. I believe you will find WPI to be a college of proven worth and a splendid reputation. The physical plant is excellent. The laboratories are well equipped. The financial picture is sound. And the faculty is superb. Behind you stands a united board of directors, a faculty looking to your leadership with great optimism and confidence. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the power vested to me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I charge you to perform faithfully the trust that we are placing in your hands. You have the assurance of our help and our prayers for your success. President Berkey, it is with great pleasure that Professor Chris Miller and I present you with the symbols of your office, the Presidential Medallion and the WPI Charter.
Good afternoon. Chairman Marshall, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, other members of the WPI family, and distinguished guests. I am deeply honored to be appointed the 15th president of this great university. I accept these exciting, if somewhat daunting, responsibilities with humility and with great enthusiasm, both for what WPI is and has been under the nurturing of my 14 predecessors and for what it can become with the help of all of you. I thank you most sincerely for this opportunity and for your warm greetings. As my first official act, I would like to present WPI's Presidential Medal to three individuals whose presence on this platform honors both WPI and me personally. I begin, of course, with Senator Kennedy. And what can be left to say after that marvelous and generous address, if we didn't need Senator Kennedy so badly in Washington, the best thing I could do for WPI this afternoon would be to hang this medal around his neck and go back to teaching calculus. But I have an opportunity I wish not to pass. During more than four decades of distinguished public service, Senator Kennedy has devoted himself assiduously to the cause of education at all levels from his creation of the government loan packages in the 1960s, to his stewardship of Head Start, to his sponsorship just this past month of BioTeach, a unique partnership between the biotechnology industry and Massachusetts high schools. Senator Kennedy has championed the notion that, as he says, and I quote, a decent quality education is the greatest equalizer for all Americans. As an advocate for science and technology education, Senator Kennedy has no peer. He has consistently raised his voice in support of university research and education and has fought to keep Massachusetts a leader in the bioscience and technology fields. Senator Kennedy, for all you have done for Massachusetts and for America, I am honored to present to you WPI's Presidential Medal inscribed with your name, today's date, and the simple phrase, education champion. Please accept this medal as a symbol of WPI's deep appreciation and gratitude. His comment just now was yours is bigger than mine, so I think, <laughs> I think he might be taking me up on the offer. We are honored also to have with us this afternoon, as you heard from Bill Marshall, uh, from the Massachusetts delegation, our congressman, the Honorable Jim McGovern. It's been one of the real pleasures in coming to WPI to get to know the congressman and to understand how comprehensively he represents the needs of this district and what a good friend he is, not only to WPI, and he is a wonderful friend to WPI, but to so many parts and aspects of Worcester and of his entire district. I've come to appreciate how profoundly Jim understands and pursues the issues of our district many of which are the major issues facing the nation. From the problem of hunger in the Worcester region, jobs and the economy, to education and health care, and on to foreign policy, our congressman distinguishes himself and our delegation at the highest level. For all he has done for our district and for the nation, we are fortunate and honored today to be able to present to Congressman James McGovern, WPI's Presidential Medal, this inscribed simply with his name and the word statesman. Jim McGovern, may we please present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
As you know by now, I'm a mathematician, and one of my heroes is Isaac Newton, a founder of the calculus. Both wise and humble, Newton offered his generous appraisal of his life's work by saying the following, if I've been able to see further than others, it is because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. Like Newton's world, WPI has benefited from the vision and leadership of true giants, beginning with John Boynton, whose founding gift created this university with the proviso, and I quote, that the benefits of this school shall not be confined to the theories of science, but as far as possible shall extend to that practical application of its principles, which will give the greatest advantage in the affairs of life. Hence our motto, Lehr and Kunst, or theory and practice, and 140 years of producing graduates not only well-educated in engineering, science, and the liberal arts, but also well-prepared to apply their knowledge, intellect, and practical experiences from the distinctive components of the WPI program to make a real difference in the world. You're hearing that phrase often this afternoon, as you should. Now, another of the giants on whose shoulders we stand today is a man who provided inspired leadership to this university for decades and who led the development of the WPI plan and of our global studies program. The forms in which Boynton's vision have been implemented on this campus and quite literally around the world for the past 35 years. He is with us today and he has honored me personally by serving as the chair of the committee to organize this inaugural ceremony. He is, of course, our Dean Emeritus, William Grogan. On behalf of his many devoted colleagues and thousands of students who matured under his guidance, I call him forward at this time also to receive WPI's Presidential Medal, engraved, engraved with Bill's name, today's date, and the simple phrase, WPI visionary, Bill Grogan. <clears throat> When the Board of Trustees asked me to become the 15th president of WPI, I naturally felt both honored and proud. I also felt a deep sense of gratitude for WPI's decision to call on someone from the academy and from the liberal arts tradition to lead this university. As you know, today many universities are turning to corporate executives, government officials, or others outside the academy for leadership often in the hope of quick solutions to pressing problems. I offer no silver bullet in this regard, but rather the knowledge gained through long years of experience of what excellence in teaching means, why research and scholarship are so important to a university's success, and what a university ought to and can aspire to be. I was excited to receive the offer of this presidency for two primary reasons. One was my personal belief in the power of science and mathematics education to prepare young people well for achievement and success in many fields of study and walks of life. A curriculum and a research program centered on science and technology, complemented and enriched by other fine and professional arts and by programs in management seem to me about as good as it gets in higher education. The other appeal of this position was in the marvelous experience I had had in my discussions with the search committee and in the campus visit which Kathy and I so very much enjoyed. 
It seemed to us as if every member of the WPI community whom we met, trustees, faculty, staff, students, and alumni alike, all shared an evident contagious enthusiasm for this place. I want to be associated with people who are happy to be where they are, excited about what they are doing, and optimistic about what the future holds for them and for each other. Despite some recent setbacks, it was very evident that the people of WPI have these important qualities in abundance. In accepting the trustees' offer, I did so with great enthusiasm for this historic institution and with confidence in my ability to help direct its future. I was somewhat disconcerted, though, when not long afterward I came across a passage in the book Two Towers, The Centennial History of WPI. That passage describes the inauguration of WPI's 10th president, Harry Purnell Stork, and includes the remarks of his friend and colleague, T. Keith Glennon. Then the head of Case Institute of Technology, Glennon offered President Stork the following startling bit of advice. Your high office carries with it a number of privileges, the most important of which is serving as the abject slave of at least eight masters. They are as follows, the board of trustees, the faculty and staff of the college, the alumni, the students, the parents of the students, the financial benefactors, the various institutions of learning and genius, or committees of public service, and the general public. You, sir, must satisfy them all, not one at a time, but simultaneously. Now, President Stork was a former three-star general and a NATO commander, so he may not have been particularly cowed by his friend's words. I, on the other hand, required more than a few moments to digest them. While speaking at least somewhat tongue-in-cheek, Mr. Glennon captured one thing quite correctly, that the expectations for a president of WPI are indeed high. So in accepting the honor you have bestowed on me today, I do so with deep humility and with the caveat that I almost certainly will not be able to satisfy all of the aforementioned parties, either one at a time or simultaneously. I do, however, pledge to make my very best effort on every occasion to lead and to serve this splendid university in the manner it deserves. For us to realize in the years ahead the great potential that WPI holds today, however, it will take far more than the humble pledge of a single president. It will require all of us to work together as a committed and united WPI family, sharing our ideas and talents and applying the know-how that has become the hallmark of this university. We must listen carefully to our students, for theirs is the voice of the future. We must reach out and engage our alumni, for they are what the historian Warren Alt called the mainstream of living tradition, the generations that have buoyed and propelled this university throughout its journey. We must support and encourage our faculty as they prepare, in WPI terminology, the technical humanists, the technological humanists, who will build and lead tomorrow's world as they illuminate and add to the knowledge on which the world's progress depends and as they help us to understand and celebrate our own humanity and its responsibilities. We must understand and appreciate the importance of the work done by the university's staff at all levels, from the inspired leadership of our provost and vice presidents to the professional support provided in every office and program to the manner in which this beautiful campus is maintained and improved. We will invest in training and professional development for our staff, just as they personally so invest so much of their own lives in the successful operation day in and day out of this university. And we must fully engage our trustees, possessing as they do a wealth of experience and the attendant wisdom spiced by the evident desire to help guide promote and advance WPI by actions both profound and ordinary. These are the ways in which I hope to lead this community with the help of all of you. On this historic day, my thoughts cannot help but turn to the inauguration of WPI's first president, Charles O. Thompson. The drizzling rain that fell on most of that November day could not dampen the spirits 
of what seemed to be the whole of Worcester as its citizens trod their way across our muddy grounds to catch their first glimpse of the man who would lead this fledgling institution. With great pride in the endeavor before him, President Thompson asked the assembled gathering, in what nobler work could we engage? What more exhilarating project could allure us than the better education of the boys who will eventually be the pillars of the state? With the advantage of nearly 140 years of societal evolution and the benefit of coming to WPI long after it has grown into an accomplished university of far greater stature and aspirations, I have the privilege and the responsibility of standing before you today and asking what nobler work could we engage? What more exhilarating projects could allure us than the better education of the men and women who are eventually to be the leaders in their fields of their communities and of our nation? Indeed, I believe that WPI today has a greater opportunity to make a difference in our nation and in the world than ever before. This university stands squarely astride the major forces that are changing the world with its project-enriched education centered on science and technology, enhanced and made complete by the ways and works of the arts and humanities, and expanded in perspective by the global program experiences. From its very beginning, WPI has prepared its students well for what John Boynton referred to as the affairs of life. While that originally may have meant the developing industrial life of central Massachusetts, we have for decades prepared our students for lives of achievement, leadership, and fulfillment, not just in Massachusetts, but in the world. Evidence for this claim abounds throughout the ranks of WPI's distinguished alumni, who are leaders of corporations and armies, entrepreneurs, educators, scientists, and engineers of every stripe, leaders of communities and of important civic projects and organizations. As our nation becomes ever more aware of the importance to our economic and national security of having a citizenry more knowledgeable about the potentials and the limitations of science and technology, a workforce better prepared to sustain and advance our science and technology-based industries, and a more effective system of public and higher education, WPI sets a shining example. New York Times foreign affairs columnist and author Tom Friedman has got it just right. The world indeed has become flat due to the great advances in communication technologies. What will assure America's continuing leadership on this newly leveled playing field is the continuing stream of creativity and innovation that flows from the science and engineering programs of our great universities. The critical intellectual capital that cannot be moved offshore or quartered and distributed around the globe because it is embedded seamlessly in the flow of ideas within and among universities, innovative companies, government laboratories and agencies, and individuals excited by the enormous power of scientific and technological innovation and still inspired by America's dreams and values. The type of education offered by WPI has never been more relevant to these challenges than it is today. The opportunity for students to be educated in a context richly informed by science and technology, whether their primary interest lies within these fields, in management, or elsewhere in the liberal arts, will increasingly, I believe, come to be recognized as outstanding general preparation for life in an increasingly technological world. And our work with public school teachers and students to strengthen academic programs at all levels from the earliest elementary grades through high school is vitally important, both to America's employment needs and to our ability to continue to meet the obligations of world leadership. To paraphrase one of Senator Kennedy's recent comments, and I quote, now is the time and Massachusetts is the place to which I would add, Senator, Worcester is the city and WPI is the model. Thank you. 
I referred earlier to WPI President Thomas Thompson's inauguration on November of 1868. On a very different November day, nearly a century after WPI opened its doors, the American president during my own coming of age and another personal hero, John F. Kennedy, was scheduled to deliver an address to the Dallas Citizens Council. In that address, he was to salute their new graduate research center for the Southwest, a collaboration between Texas Industry and Southern Methodist University, a facility not unlike our own Gateway Park, soon to house WPI's life science and biomedical engineering research programs. President Kennedy's words, rendered silent by the tragedy of that day, were to have expressed his conviction, and I quote from that speech, that leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. It is not a coincidence, he would have said, that those communities possessing the best in research and graduate facilities tend to attract the new and growing industries. This link between leadership and learning is not only essential at the community level, President Kennedy's speech continued, it is even more indispensable in world affairs. Ignorance and misinformation can handicap the progress of a city or a company, but they can, if allowed to prevail in foreign policy, handicap this country's security. In a world of complex and continuing problems, in a world full of frustrations and irritations, America's leadership must be guided by the lights of learning and reason, or else those who would confuse rhetoric with reality and the plausible with the possible will gain the popular ascendancy with their seemingly swift and simple solutions to every world problem. End of the quote from that passage. President Kennedy's words are astonishing in their relevance to us more than 40 years later as we face a world where suspicion continues to grapple fiercely with enlightenment. In those words and his belief in the essential pairing of leadership and learning, that the one is always lifted up when accompanied by the other, also have deep resonance for those of us at WPI, echoing as they do the historical heart of our own educational philosophy, the balance of theory and practice, Blair and Kunst, theory and practice, our motto, our creed. Its 19th century meaning was that young men of WPI learned both the elements of relevant science and the techniques and means of production. Its meaning today is that WPI students gain not only a first-class liberal education centered on the sciences and engineering, but also the understanding of how to comprehend and achieve in the world they confront. As our colleague Professor Helen Vassallo has observed, theory and practice are not joined in our motto by a vector, but rather by a conjunction. It is theory and practice. That is, WPI students learn profound lessons about how to get things done in the world, not simply by the application of academic lessons, but in marshalling the sum of what they have learned from their studies, their experiences, their families, and their mentors, and from their earnest commitment to understanding how things work and what can reasonably be expected from the determined application of one's skills and one's knowledge. The most distinctive form in which this development takes place today at WPI is the project, three of which are specifically required for graduation, one each in the areas of general education, the intersection of science and technology with society, and the major area of study. These are substantial undertakings, each of the last two being fully the equivalent of three courses. Project work involves the formulation, description, analysis, and solution of hard and important problems. Some projects are done individually. Others are group efforts, requiring the participants to master the challenge of working successfully with teammates of varied interests and talents. Some projects are completed on this campus, but many are done at WPI project centers literally around the world, in London, Madrid, Venice, Bangkok, Africa, Australia, and elsewhere. Projects are not internships or co-op assignments, but substantial engagements with real problems in the world. Subject to the same kinds of time and resource constraints, 
cultural influences, and leadership challenges that await our students in the postgraduate world of professional life. Students and faculty alike describe the project experiences as truly transformative in students' development. Put another way, WPI graduates know how to get a job done. Indeed, learning to achieve in the world was one of the guiding principles of the WPI plan. The bold innovation in undergraduate technological education centered on projects rather than courses and on outcomes rather than inputs. Instituted on this campus more than 30 years ago, the WPI plan proved to be a model for outcomes-oriented education in the United States. It is the bedrock on which we will continue to build these marvelously effective academic programs. Beyond the basic elements of achievement, WPI also prepares its students for making a difference in the world. Again, the leadership part of leadership and learning. I recently spent some time with our ROTC students, many of them will, who will be commissioned as officers in the United States Armed Forces within the next 24 hours. I spoke with them about the moments in their lives that will challenge their courage and test their resolve. The moments that will force them to reap deep down inside themselves to find the stuff of which they are truly made. That stuff, it will turn out, will be much the doing of their parents and families, of their faith, and to a very significant degree, I believe, of what their faculty and mentors at WPI have given them. How do we prepare our students for such moments? By letting them know that we care as much about their character as their intellect. By providing them with every opportunity to work side by side with faculty on projects and research that benefit the world beyond our campus. And by maintaining a community in which every member is valued for her or his contribution. Let me add that just as our founders debated amongst themselves what should be the proper balance between theory and practice, so do we continue to discuss every aspect of our curriculum today. And that is just as it should be. We must be prepared always to re-examine the ways in which we teach our students, making sure that our aim is not simply to fill them with knowledge, but to prepare them for the challenges of life, some of which the New England author, Edith Wharton, once described as being, and I quote, unafraid of change, insatiable in intellectual curiosity, interested in big things, and happy in small ways. And as we continually assess and recommit to these excellent modes of teaching and learning, let us remain mindful of the demonstrated abilities and undeveloped potential of our students, striving to help them develop as fully as possible in their days on this campus, and realizing that when a student fails, in some way, large or small, we have failed as well. Regarding our students, I'm eager for you to know that becoming acquainted with them has become one of the most pleasurable experiences I've had on this campus. My wife Kathy and I have hosted a number of dinners for groups of students at our campus residence. At some point during these meals, we usually ask the students, what do they like best about being at WPI? Their answer typically is just about everything. They like the faculty whom they find extremely accessible. They like their fellow students, and they especially like the feeling of openness and community that allows them to be themselves without pressure to conform to any one notion of what a WPI person should be. On one of these occasions, the student asked me what kind of president I thought I would be. My answer was that I hope to be the kind of president who is worthy of an institution as loved as WPI. I intend to be a vigorous champion of this university, following the example of Watt Tyler Claverius, the ebullient and popular Navy admiral who served as WPI's seventh president. Admiral Claverius was known for his clear eye, strong heart, and sure stride, and for his legendary devotion to WPI. Trustee Aldous Higgins once wrote of President Claverius, and I quote, he has spread our fame all over this country. He's told everybody from Maine to California that the Worcester Tech boys won the war, with a little help, of course, from the United States Navy. <laughs> Indeed, championing this university has already proved among my most effortless duties, 
not because I don't employ the effort necessary, but because it requires no straining for either content or conviction. There is so much to be proud of at WPI, and it is my great pleasure to share that pride wherever I go. The marvelous English writer and critic G.K. Chesterton once observed that there are many people who believe, and I quote, if you leave a thing alone, you will leave it as it is. But Chester Chesterton added, you don't. If you leave a thing alone, you leave it to a torrent of change. As much as I have discussed the traditions and the value of our programs as they stand today, it is inevitable that we must continue to develop, and yes, we must change this university to assure its continuing success and leadership in higher education. Now this should not concern us, for WPI exemplifies the kind of institution whose students, faculty, and alumni have never left it to stand still, never left it to rest on past achievements. Rather, WPI has transformed from a small 19th century technological university designed to educate the sons of Worcester into a 21st century model for innovative higher education open to women and men of all faiths, races, and economic backgrounds, and from all states and many nations around the world. We will continue to ask ourselves hard questions about whether we are doing all we can to make the WPI experience the best it can possibly be for all of our students and faculty. I'm particularly proud of the number of women rising to positions of prominence in this administration and in the faculty. I hope and intend to see their numbers increase as we welcome even more women of high achievement. Further, I hope and intend that individuals from all quarters of our society, minority and majority, male or female, will see WPI as a place fully welcoming and supportive of all people of high ability and ambition. This will be essential for the success of our students, the strength of our programs of education and research, and for the very future of this university. I've spoken a good deal today about teaching and learning, especially as they pertain to the undergraduate, and that is as it should be. For the most important thing we do is preparing young people for productive and fulfilling lives. But WPI is involving into a greater and more prominent institution, in large part due to the research interest and achievements of our faculty. The university is long known for its strength in traditional areas of engineering and distinguished by strong engineering departments and such specialized pillars of excellence as our Metals Processing Institute and our graduate program in fire protection engineering. WP has also promoted tremendous growth in our basic science, mathematics, and computer science programs with a keen interest in big ideas and broadly interdisciplinary collaborations. Along with other research universities in this nation, WPI is making major investments in the further development and integration of our life science departments with a special interest in the ways in which engineering and scientific methods and knowledge can be applied to improve health, fight illness, and relieve suffering through improved diagnostics, therapeutics, medical devices, and the full spectrum of concerns from the lab bench to the hospital bed. Our investment in Gateway Park, which will have as its first tenants the WPI Life Science Engin and Engineering Departments and our Bioengineering Institute, further signals our strong commitment to interdisciplinary research and graduate education in the life sciences, as well as our civic commitment to fueling the economic development of Worcester and of central Massachusetts. As we press ahead to strengthen our research and its applications, we will, as a necessary part of that advance, improve and expand our programs in graduate education, welcoming talented young scholars from across the nation to join us just as apprentices did in the shops of Worcester a century ago to join the important work of developing the technologies and aiding in the scientific advances that will drive economic development and assure the nation's continuing scientific and technological eminence just as they pre prepare for their own careers of achievement and leadership. My frequent references to leadership signal as well WPI's ambitions in management education and research 
our important ability to integrate management and technological education and our resolve to provide courses, programs, and consultation of value to the industries of New England as we further develop our programs in entrepreneurship, the management of technology, addressing the imperatives of effective leadership in the corporate world. As WPI broadens its worldview, the world's view of WPI will increasingly include appreciation for our expanded programs in the arts and humanities, including interdisciplinary programs spanning the technological and the humanistic and artistic. The exclusive Bachelor of Science degree will no doubt have to make room for a Bachelor of Arts program, embracing both technological and innovative degree programs in the humanities, the arts, and the social sciences. As I said in my first address to the faculty last fall, we should elevate the fine and liberal arts on this campus to a stature equivalent to that of the disciplines in science, engineering, and management. In the world in which we are preparing students to achieve and to lead, success and fulfillment will result in large part from the insights, habits of mind, and self-understanding that result from serious engagement with the fine and liberal arts, not just as they reflect on technology and science, but for their own intellectual merits. Now, as we develop our academic programs, we must also continue to develop our campus facilities. Our new life science and bioengineering facilities at Gateway Park will free up space on the main campus. Now we have a campus to refer to as the main campus, you'll notice, and thus allow for the renovation and reuse of academic space, with renovations beginning as early as January of 2007. Another important project will be the development of improved facilities for recreation and athletics. Just imagine a new recreation center on the slope just behind this podium, presenting one story of construction to complete what will be a beautiful and pedestrian-friendly quadrangle before me and four full stories fa facing the playing fields. Imagine fitness, recreation, and training amenities fully supportive of today's healthy lifestyles. Imagine your name on such a marvelous facility. <laughs> We look forward also to expanded and renovated Gordon libraries with sufficient space and technology to support the collaborative activities of student project teams, as well as provide for the full functionality of a modern library, increased and improved student housing, and yes, finally, a solution to the parking problem. These important improvements to our physical facilities will be nearly as important to the quality of teaching, learning, and campus life as revisions to our academic programs. They will require all of us in the WPI family to reach into our pockets as well as our hearts, for it is part of the essential continuing work of building this university. I've spoken at some length about our students' practical abilities and the tangible contributions that WPI students, faculty, and alumni have made to our neighboring communities, to our nation, and to our world. And they are contributions of which we can be justifiably proud. There is an equally important purpose unique to universities, and that is the purpose of the pursuit of pure knowledge. Yes, WPI should always have an eye toward the practical and the service we can perform, but we must also vigorously maintain and nurture our commitment to the genuine freedom of inquiry. Ours should be and is a university in which ideas can flow easily and unfettered, offer themselves up for debate, and inspire greatness. Universities alone provide the kind of environment where men and women have the liberty every day of thinking, rethinking, and then thinking again. This is not the stuff of the ivory tower. It is the very act of intellect overcoming ignorance, reason defeating rhetoric, and light illuminating darkness. Now, we may not always agree with one another. On occasion, we may disagree with terrific vehemence, but we must be brave enough to let those disagreements happen secure enough as a community to withstand them, and willing always to learn from them. I believe WPI succeeds on all of these accounts, and that too is a hallmark 
of a great university. As much as WPI is becoming a university of the world, it remains importantly a university of Worcester, not the University of Worcester, for we are fortunate to be located in a city richly populated by colleges and universities of great and varied distinction. Indeed, Worcester is much more of a university city that is commonly understood. We are pleased and encouraged by the dynamism of our city and its leadership, not only in City Hall, but broadly across Worcester's business, civic, educational, and cultural organizations and institutions, and by the increasing momentum that is here for Worcester's further development. What is good for Worcester, Massachusetts will be good for WPI, and we intend to continue the strong tradition of WPI's contribution to our city's development and success. One need look no further than to our mayor, our city manager, or even to the bagpipe brigade in today's processional, for which I was personally very honored and very grateful, or to the resolve of the Worcester firefighters to understand the marvelous qualities and character of this fine city. As I come to my close, I turn once again to Admiral Claverius, a man famous in addition for his love of WPI for his hasty retreats. His habit, it was said, after an enthusiastic reception at a speaking engagement, was to leave the room to its applause, not pausing at all to exchange pleasantries, but to dash straight into the back seat of his waiting automobile. When an associate named Paul Swan asked him about this curious habit, the admiral responded, and I quote, always leave on the crest of the wave, Swan, always on the crest of the wave. Now, if you suspected, my retreat today won't be quite as smart as those of Admiral Claverius, not just because I drive myself when I'm not on foot, nor do I feel that WPI is in any way on the crest of its wave. Indeed, the tide that buoys this great university is quite clearly rising. And as WPI continues to rise, let us together remain humbly mindful of the great heritage that informs and sustains our work even as we face and welcome the challenges and opportunities of this new era. Forty years ago, I addressed my high school graduation in a small Ohio town near another city called Worcester, also frequently mispronounced, in remarks entitled, Who if not I? When if not now? Today, I have the honor and the pleasure of joining with Senator Kennedy in saying, the when is now, the where is here, and the who is all of us. Thank you again for this marvelous opportunity and honor. Thank you indeed, uh, President Berkey. Thank you for reminding us of our unique and enduring heritage and for helping us appreciate the many reasons we have to be proud of this institution, its vital mission, its exceptional people, for sharing your inspiring vision for WPI's future, uh, and it's helping to see us how the extraordinary opportunity that we have to serve as a beacon for the rest of higher education, a truly shining example of what a university can and should be for its students, for its community, for the world of ideas, and for society as a whole. Your remarks have filled us with an uplifting sense of optimism about the new era in our history that we begin today. So thank you indeed very much. I would just... Uh, give you a reminder for all of you uh, here that there will be a reception uh, following in the campus center. You are all uh, welcome indeed. Father Scanlon is uh, going to give the benediction and after that <clears throat> if I could ask you to remain standing 
until the processional has left, it would be appreciated. Father Scanlon. Let us stand and pray to our God. God, our Father, we thank you today for this gathering. We are thankful that Dennis Berkey answered your call to be the 15th president of WPI. We are thankful for people like Boynton and Washburn for using the wisdom you gave them to not only create this university, but give it a vision to have people use their talents to make this world a better place for all human beings. We're thankful for the trustees, the benefactors, alumni, administrators, faculty and staff that have adopted that vision for the 21st century. We're thankful for the students who come here to learn and go forth with that vision. We're thankful for our parents and all who in their love and sacrifice for us made a higher education possible for us. We're thankful for all those who even at this very hour are defending us and our nation. Especially are we grateful to those like Joseph, John, and Robert who pay the supreme sacrifice so we may live in freedom. However, being human, we have a few favors to ask before we go. Please grant all of us gathered here today a safe return to our homes. And secondly, please keep our new president and this university always in the palm of your hand. Amen.
Thank you.